So what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Are you troubled by strange noises in the middle of the night? Do you experience feelings of dread in your basement or attic? Have you or any of your family ever seen a spook, specter, or ghost? If the answer is yes, then don't wait another minute. Sit back, relax, while I review Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Because busting on movies makes me feel good. Let's go. So what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Jeff Man 316 Pop Culture Reporter Channel. I'm your host as always, Jeff Man 316. Yeah, that's me right there. Jeff Man 316 Live is where we join each other for a watch along, usually Sunday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern. Um, talk, we watch a movie, talk pop culture, talk movies, anything else you guys want to talk about. And uh, like I said, halftime we don't even watch the movie. But either way, it's a fun time. Come over and join us. Also join me on social media, Jeff Man 316 on Instagram is mainly where I'm at. I can chat with you guys there, or you can do it on the Jeff Man 316 Pop Culture Reporter Facebook page. Either way, let's get some conversation started. And what is this conversation that's going to be? It's going to be, I'm going to tell you whether to watch this film. Yeah, WTF, should you watch Ghostbusters Frozen Empire? So yeah, this is going to be my little review of Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. I just saw it. I did an after theater reaction. I did a short of that. Um, fairly positive, so I've let it settle for a couple days. We'll talk about that, and uh, yeah, let's get into the review. So, Ghostbusters: Frozen Empire stars McKenna Grace, Paul Rudd, Carrie Coon, Finn Wolfhard, Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, Ernie Hudson, Patton Oswalt, and on and on and on. Yeah, it, it's a the cast is a little too big, and we'll talk about that. that's one of the downfalls of this movie. But either way, so what I wanted to do was. I saw the movie, did the out-of-theater reaction, and I waited a couple days. Now, why is that? Because I tend to find when there's sequels to movies that I grew up with that are like iconic, like Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters 2, that I tend to get a little wrapped up in the nostalgia of things. So I come out of the theater and I've got a high from seeing something from my youth or when I grew up watching. And I've been, I've been a fan of the original Ghostbusters um, the second movie's got its own problems. I'm not a big fan of the end, but I love Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, and the gang. So I get a little wrapped up in the nostalgia of things, and I think I did that with this one because I go home, I get on the live stream, I talk to a couple of you guys about the movie, I let it settle for a couple of days, and so I'm sitting here thinking there's two things. Number one, if I'm describing this movie to somebody, I want to think of some iconic scenes that I can kind of describe there's nothing other than the big set pieces, the big action sequences. If you've seen the trailers, you've seen a majority of, of, of what I would tell you. And it was very hard for me to think of something. So it's not a lot of memorable scenes or memorable dialogue. The, uh, the original Ghostbusters movies, man, are quotable. When someone asks you, if you're a god, you say, yes! There's nothing in this, but I'm going to start with, though, the positives. So I re I did like the movie. I'm just going to tell you that. I'm not going to hate all on it. But I love McKenna Grace. I think she's done a good job. Um, it's kind of weird. She's in that weird age. She's 15, but I think in real life she's 18 now. So it'll be very interesting what they do with her character moving forward. But she's a really good actress. I like her. Love Paul Rudd. Love him and everything that he does. He plays a good stepdad type of character. Um, Carrie Coon doesn't do anything in this movie. And speaking of not doing anything, Finn Wolfhard, if it wasn't for our buddy Slimer over here, he would have nothing to do. Yeah. Um, the characters of Lucky and Podcast come back around. Once again, really nothing for them to do but fluff. And Podcast, man, he's aged so much since the last movie, I almost didn't recognize him. But that, then you get to the legacy characters or the original Ghostbusters. I love what they did with Dan Aykroyd. He had quite a bit more um, to do with the plot of this one. He's kind of like the glue that hooks the old characters and the new ones together and then does a little um, exposition to move the plot along a little bit. I really like what they did with him. I like Ernie Hudson's character being the one funding these, this thing, you know, the, the new Ghostbusters and the science and the research and all that. 
I didn't like what they did with Bill Murray because he needs to either quit dipping his toe into Ghostbusters and dive all in or get the fuck off the set because everything that he did, basically, that was in the movie, you probably saw almost all of it in the trailers. Call dark and horny at 12 o'clock. There was one scene that's a callback to some of the research that he was doing you know, in the lab testing from one of the, from the, one of the original Ghostbusters movies. But I literally do not remember laughing at anything he said because I've already heard most of it in the trailer or it was just tired old, you know, cliche shit. So he's a pretty much a wasted character as well. So there's too many characters in here. The ones that they use, they should have centralized more and done more with them. I know I keep veering off the path. Let's continue with the positives. I love the New York setting. They could have done a lot more with it, but it, there's nothing like seeing and hearing uh, Ecto-1 scream down the street, man. Um, I love that. I love the uh, firehouse that they brought that back in that setting. That's pretty amazing. Um, the character of Peck that came back, um, I liked him being, a, you know, almost like a little nemesis there. That's probably another one of the downfalls. There's no edge to this thing. So it's almost like every time I think of a positive, I think of a negative, right? So it's, that's kind of where I'm at in the middle with this movie. It goes to show you that. So, but let's go ahead and dive into some of my issues. Number one, is it very realistic that a family like this would be Ghostbusters? You've got one kid who's 15 years old. He's pretty smart. you got her scientist going to be stepdad, probably teacher. The mother that has no scientific background and the brother who's just a waste of space. Would those four people really make a good Ghostbusters team? Why? Um, who would trust them to do that? And number two about them, if Winston has to come and save the day every time something happens to their equipment or they need to do something more with research or whatever, then why doesn't Winston just get his own damn Ghostbusters team? And maybe he has. Maybe in, in the future installments they might do like Men in Black and do Ghostbusters International or whatever. But either way. Another problem that I got, like I said, is... The, there's too much going on with the characters. Everybody's spread too thin. Uh, they've got side stories. It almost feels like Phoebe's going through a a, a, a coming-of-age movie with mixed in with a family turmoil because she's got this new stepfather-type figure in her life and how he's going to work into it. Uh, she's got this weird, almost lesbian-like relationship with this female ghost that they throw in there. I don't know what the hell was up with that. That just felt weird watching it. I don't know what they're going to do with that later, but. What's up with that? What's up with that? Um, and then when you get to the, the big bad, uh, you've seen him in the trailers or at least the shadows of it. When they show him, it's not menacing at all. There's nothing menacing about this. There's no feel feeling of tension. There's no feeling that anybody's ever in danger. It's almost like you're just waiting for whatever they're going to do to figure out how to trap him. You, there, There's no sense of dread, doom, or whatever. It's just a very watered-down villain. I've seen better villains on the go real Ghostbusters cartoon. So the villain doesn't even show up until the third act, and by the time he does, they wrap the shit up so quick, you're like, that's it? I don't know. It was very anticlimactic. So now that I look back at it, it's just as many positives as negatives. So, if I'm thinking about this movie and I'm trying to describe it to somebody, it, it smelled like Ghostbusters while I was watching it. It looked like Ghostbusters. It felt like Ghostbusters. But after the fact, did it taste like Ghostbusters? It's more like Ghostbusters light or sugar-free Ghostbusters, where they claim it's going to be just as good, but it never is. So, I don't know. I'm just telling you. Am I going to recommend you to watch this film? If you're a really uber Ghostbuster fan and you want to see everything Ghostbusters, then yeah, you should watch it. If you did not like Ghostbusters Afterlife, you're not going to like this because this one is even more fluff. Um, if you want a nostalgia kick and you just have to have something Ghostbusters because uh, you, know, you just have to see ghost, everything Ghostbusters, then you should go see it at the theater. Otherwise, um, you might want to wait and stream it or buy it when it comes out on 4K. I know there's already a steelbook announced, uh, multiple, I think, variations of covers and stuff, but um, you might be might want to wait on this one and not drop as much cash in the theater. I think the nostalgia got 
washed over me and made me think that it was a lot better than it was. I don't even know how I would rank the movies. I think you still got to have the main two as the top two, even though the ending of the second one I don't like. Um, I don't know. I don't know whether this one's going to be ahead of Afterlife. Afterlife had a lot of heart um, with the Harold Ramis stuff, Egon. Uh, this is missing some of the heart. One of you guys told me that. I agree with that. Um, it's missing the heart. It's missing the edge. You know, the original Ghostbusters felt like an extended SNL skit that had some edge to it, some wit to it, some, um, you know, Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd. Yes, it's true. This man has no dick. Probably doing a little bit of um, ad-libbing and stuff. So it, it just doesn't have an edge. It's kind of soft. Yeah, S-A-W-F-T, man. It's like Ghostbusters Light or Ghostbusters Soft or Disney Ghostbusters even. So, so yeah, after all that, I mean, I give it a really soft thumbs up, and I've told you whether whether I think you should watch it or not and who should watch it. Um, I don't think it can get much more than a soft thumbs up from me. So, um, you know, kind of a weak entry. Let me know in the comments down below after you saw it. Did you feel the same way? Did you feel like that you couldn't even really remember anything? There was nothing memorable about it, I guess is a good way to put it. So it's almost like tofu. It fills you up. It makes you feel good maybe a little bit while you're eating it. But then afterwards, you're like, no taste whatsoever. So um, enough enough jokes about, um, you know, what it felt and tastes like. But either way. So what did you think? Put it in the comments down below while you're down there. Smash the like button. Like, comment, subscribe, share. Do all the normal YouTube stuff. I love you guys. Keep supporting the channel. You can support me also by hitting the notification bell because you'll know when I post new videos. You can watch, uh, hit me up on social media, JeffMan316 on Instagram. You can watch the live streams. Do anything you can to support the channel. Um, I love you guys. And until next time, boys and girls, when I let you know whether you should watch this film, this is JeffMan316, your pop culture reporter, signing out saying you guys be safe out there. Well, overruled. Sustained. Thank you.